Eesti delegatsioon tuli Kremlisse mais 1989. Möödus kõigest paar aastat ja tohutusti peerumist Nõukud liidust oli jäänud vaid mälestus. Täna võib Tallinna vanagraamiturgudelt iga üks osta endale sõdurisineli, kindralimundri või posta kõik võimalike aumärke ja ordeneid ning kui eriti veab, siis isegi Nõukuditu hangelase kult tähe. What led to the collapse of an empire that covered a sixth of the planet with its huge arsenals of nuclear weapons? One of the most powerful empires the world had ever seen. Johan Ara was an Estonian delegate to the Soviet Congress of People's Deputies from 1989 to 1991. He was a signatory to a document which proved to be a time bomb that would destroy the very foundations of the communist regime. Добрый вечер. Здравствуйте, товарищи. Сегодня в Москве продолжил работу съезд народных депутатов СССР. But on the 1st of June 1989, the Estonian deputy Endel Lipma proposed the setting up of a committee to investigate the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact and its secret clauses. Ja siin on endiselt sees väga oluline punkt. Priznajot protokolle juridiciski niesosta jaetelnimi inidist viitelnimis momenta ich podpisania. See on otsustava tähtsuse kaosa. Mihail Sergeevich Gorbachev poddijal predlaženje o sazdani komisiji po ocenki etova dogovora. Sjest poddijal predlaženje o sazdani komisiji i poručil deputatom Respublik Pribaltiki i prezidiumu vnesti predlaženje po jo sastavu. The Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact signed in Moscow on the 23rd of August 1939, was a non-aggression treaty devised by Soviet Foreign Minister Molotov and Nazi Foreign Minister von Ribbentrop. But it also included a secret protocol. Under the terms of the pact, Stalin could occupy the Baltic states, Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania, and declare war on Finland. In return, Hitler was to have a free hand in Poland. A week later, on the 1st of September 1939, the German Wehrmacht invaded Poland and the Second World War began. At the Nuremberg trials, Stalin is supposed to have sent a message to von Ribbentrop, now in the dock, accused of war crimes. It was said that Stalin offered to save his life if von Ribbentrop would deny the existence of the secret protocols in the 1939 pact. Von Ribbentrop refused. The former German foreign minister took the stand and revealed the truth about the secret agreement between Hitler and Stalin. The International Tribunal passed the death sentence on von Ribbentrop. He was the first Nazi to be hung at the Nuremberg trials. Despite von Ribbentrop's testimony, Stalin, Molotov and their successors always denied the existence of any secret protocols. The biggest secret in the diplomatic history of the Soviet Union was revealed for the first time only in the summer of 1989 when an Estonian deputy, lawyer Igor Gretzin, read it out in full at the Kremlin Palace of Congresses. When the secret protocols were declared null and void later in December 1989, it marked the beginning of the end for the Soviet Empire. The Soviet Congress of People's Deputies was the first and only democratically elected legislative body in the history of the Soviet Union. There were 2,250 deputies from all the republics of the Soviet Union. Estonia, 
one of the smallest and westernmost republics, sent just 48 deputies. Most had promised their constituents that they would end the Soviet occupation of Estonia and restore their country's independence. Who were these people whose vision and determination finally led to the redrawing of the map of Europe? Johan Ara, the author of this film, filmed in the Kremlin Palace of Congresses on the 1st of June 1989 as the Estonian delegation met Mikhail Gorbachev in one of the wings of the huge palace where the Soviet leader had his suite of offices for the Congress meetings. This was the only time the Soviet leader agreed to meet all the members of one republic's delegation. In May 1989, Gorbachev, committed to perestroika, had set up the Soviet Congress of People's Deputies, a first step towards genuine democracy and a chance for representatives of the republics to air their concerns and grievances in Moscow. Gorbachev told the Estonian delegates he would discuss anything except the abolition of socialism or the breakup of the Soviet Union. <laughs> At that time, the 1st of June 1989, Estonian politicians were not yet permitted to speak officially about the independence of Estonia in the Kremlin. So this was their chance to raise the issue of the sovereignty of the Soviet Union over their country and their aspiration for economic independence. This was the beginning of a complex and sometimes dangerous cat and mouse game. Johan Ara was able to film the 1st of June meeting as an Estonian TV commentator because he was also a deputy and member of the Congress. Part of the footage in this film was shot by Ara himself in the Kremlin Palace of Congress. The Estonian delegation also included several deputies who were determined to remain part of the Soviet Union. They wanted to keep the empire intact, whatever the cost. <laughs> Military force was repeatedly used to keep the empire together. In the summer of 1991, the country came close to civil war. In Estonia, the election campaign was fiercely fought between the hardliners who wanted to remain in the Soviet Union and those who saw a real chance of independence for Estonia. The result was a convincing win for those wanting independence. In 
In the late 80s, the Soviet Republic of Estonia was assuming nearly the same role as Poland took in the early 1980s. Both countries led the fight against communism. Poland from outside the Soviet Union, Estonia from within. In the late 1970s, a new political force was created in Poland, which would lead to the redrawing of the maps of Europe. The Solidarity Movement began in the Gdansk shipyards. Soon, one Pole in four was a member. The Polish movement was boosted by the strong support of the Polish Pope, John Paul II. Otóż ojciec święty nie brał udziału w rewolucji, nie, nie zachęcał, nie należał do żadnego spisku. Ale same bycie i same, same postawienie wartości na pierwszym planie powodowało, że ludzie się określali, że ludzie się byli solidarni. I, i to wystarczyło nam na zorganizowanie tych ludzi obudzonych i tych ludzi, którzy y, zauważyli sens w tym i to umożliwiało samo bycie Ojca Świętego, umożliwiało walkę i zwycięstwa. Natomiast nie od słów papieża komunizm upadł, komunizm się miał słów i słowa papieża, gdyby, gdyby nie nasza walka, gdybyśmy nie zamienili słowa w ciało, no to ktoś by tam zapisał te słowa, a może by, może by poleciały tylko weter. Tu się złożyły dwie rzeczy, papież, jego słowa, i nasze obudzenie i wypełnienie treścią tych słów. Aastal 2005 täisteti Poolas, eriti aga siin Gdanskis, väga jõuliselt solidaarsus nimelise rahvaliikumise 25. aastapäeva. Ja meeldiv on tõdeda, et nende juubeli sündmust ajal ei ole unustatud ka Balti riikide rolli kommunismi vastases võitluses Ida-Euroopas ja Nõukogude liidus. Peab tõsiselt tänama et need inimesed, kes alustasid Hirvepargi ja Molotov-Ripendropi pakti tühistamist Eestis, pälvivad rahva kõige suuremat austust ja lugupidamist. Estonia kept abreast of developments in Poland in the early 1980s. Heike Ahonen made his name as a freedom fighter who spent years in jail for his political views. He was one of those who followed events in Poland by listening to the Voice of America and Radio Free Europe. Me nagu adusime, et Eestis sellist nii-öelda vaba ameti hingu liikumist tekitada vaevalt, et õnnestuks. Aga nii pea kui solidaarsus registreeriti, siis me saatsime, no meid oli võibolla 10 või 15 inimest, ma ei mäleta täpselt, õnnitlus Telegrammi Lehva Lensale selle registreerimise puhul. See oli muidugi minu süüdistus kokku võttes, ma ei tea mäleta, kas teisel või kolmanda punkti nagu kirjas, kui nõu tegelikult laimav. Heiki Ahonen and his colleagues were the freedom fighters who gave an international focus to what was now seen as the occupation of Estonia by the Soviet Union. The historic Baltic appeal was followed by a statement from the United States supporting freedom fighters in Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. President Ronald Reagan now played a significant role. At their Reykjavik summit, Reagan demanded that Gorbachev should bring the occupation of the Baltic states to an end. Estonia was encouraged by the creation and growing power of solidarity, political support from the United States and the anti-communist stance of the Vatican. In February 1987, the so-called Phosphorite War broke out. These photos were taken in Tartu, southern Estonia, on the 1st of May 1987. For the first time in the Soviet Union, students carried placards with slogans protesting against the policies of the Kremlin. The contentious issue was Moscow's plans to build the largest European phosphorite mine in the Virumar region of Estonia. 
Me oleme asja koha peal uurinud ja oleme jõudnud seisu kohale, et ilma väga tõsist kahju toomata looduskeskkonnale, elukeskkonnale üldse. Me ei saa praegu olemasoleva ja teada oleva tehnoloogiaga kaevata ei rakveres kabalas ega toolses. The phosphorite war was the first open challenge to the authority of the Kremlin from within the Soviet Union. The Kremlin and the Soviet Estonian authorities attempted to quell the protests, but the national will could not be suppressed. In June 1988, there was a change in the Estonian power structure. The pro-Moscow Estonian Communist Party chairman, Karl Vaino, was replaced by Vaino Velyas, the former Soviet ambassador to Nicaragua. Returning to his homeland after many years, his crowning moment came a few months later, on the 16th of November 1988. A few days before that, Viktor Chebrikov, former KGB chief and Soviet Politburo member, visited Estonia. He came with instructions to threaten the Estonian leaders and warn them of the potentially serious consequences of declaring sovereignty. Что такое в наше время самостоятельность? Понимаете, можно самостоятельность получить, а все остальное потерять. On the 16th of November 1988, Vaino Velyas was chosen to chair the session of the Estonian Supreme Council. The Council ignored the Kremlin's threats and adopted the Declaration of Sovereignty, a historic event in Estonia and of huge significance for the rest of the Soviet Union. Ja kohtu organite näul kõrgeim võim oma territoriumi. Palu, kes saadikutest on selle deklaratsiooni teksti vastuvõtmise poo, palu näeletada. Seoses sellega... Järgnevad päevad tõid kaasa üsnagi palju informatsioon, mis toimus Eestis, see levis vastavate allikate kaudu väga kiirelt järgnesid esimesed telefonikõned algul kesktasemel, hiljem juba tiptasemel. Tuli kiiresti otsustada, et see Suverensusdeklaratsioon ilmuks ajakirjanduses, sest riigiõiguslikust seisukohast jõustub ta peale avaldamist. Seoses sellega kiiresti tuli korraldada ka ajalehtede eri väljaanne, et ta jõuaks jõustuda ennem kui alustatakse vastukäike. The Estonian Declaration of Sovereignty attracted attention across the world. Mikhail Gorbachev was in India at the time. He was asked about the declaration at a press conference. In reality, Moscow's reaction was much harsher. То, что произошло в Эстонии, всех нас очень беспокоит. И я откровенно говорю, что это не просто такой, значит, изменение Конституции. Это политический авантюризм, который ставит перед фактом вот президента Верховного Совета. Принятие Верховным Советом Эстонской ССР поправки Конституции Республики можно рассматривать и как предложение по дальнейшему совершенствованию нашего конституционного законодательства. Мы оказались перед лицом своеобразного кризиса, так сказать. Мы, члены Единого Союзного Государства, 
Мы не изолированные республики. Тут мы должны вот, видимо, прямо, принципиально, по-дружески сказать нашим эстонским товарищам, что они допустили серьезные ошибки. И мы должны показать всем, не только в Эстонии, но и всем трудящимся страны, куда ведут эти ошибочные позиции. В связи с несоответствием Конституции СССР некоторых положений закона и декларации, принятых Верховным Советом Эстонской ССР 16 ноября, Президиум Верховного Совета СССР признал их недействующими. The London Times reported the declaration of sovereignty on the following day. In November 1988, the newspaper printed several articles about Moscow's indignation and the threats that were being made against Estonia. The Estonian leader, Arnold Rutel, was told to declare the declaration null and void. The Kremlin even considered arresting him. Midagi taulist ei juhtunud järgnevalt kuskil pool. Ükski tolle aeg Nõukogu Liidu Vabarik kaasaaratud Läti Leedu ei läinud seda teed. Umbes kolm veerand aastat iljem võttis Läti ja Leedu umbes analoogsed otsused vastu, aga ükski teine Vabarik seda ei teinud. The impact of the Estonian Declaration of Sovereignty and the Singing Revolution, the national movement which followed, had an enormous impact on the Soviet Union, an impact that can be compared to the influence that the Polish Solidarity Movement had within the Warsaw Pact countries. Estonia began to initiate new proposals for democratic structures within the Soviet Union in the late 1980s just as Poland had previously done in Eastern Europe. When we go back to the same Soviet Union declaration, it is the same formula that was there, that each region would be able to have their own territory, which was the definition. Practically, it would be the same as 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 и постфактум она как-то идет у нас впереди с точки зрения каких-то политических, экономических, перестроечных процессов. И поэтому там возникают нестандартные ситуации, которых у нас еще в стране не было. Я все сама суверен, что эта декларация мысли, он сейчас как Чехи сами революционисты, он чувствует вакя, вакя. А когда кто-то за нее, какой-то чиновник где-то в кабинете решает. Nobody was brave enough to support tiny Estonia. Many believed that the Declaration of Sovereignty, adopted by the Supreme Council with the help of the National Front, was madness. The mouse had roared against the dinosaur. But the mouse was not stupid. This first step suddenly opened up the possibility of the peaceful disintegration of the Soviet Empire. The Estonian deputies elected to the Congress were mostly nationalists who came to the Kremlin in May 1989 with three clear objectives. To have the secret protocols of the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact declared legally invalid, to introduce and spread the idea of the sovereignty of Estonia, and to achieve economic independence for Estonia. But Mikhail Gorbachev had other ideas. He was determined that any reforms had to be socialist in character and should not threaten the territorial integrity of the Soviet Union. 
А если кто-то замахнется на социализм, на советскую власть, тут, конечно, тогда ничего не получится. Народ не поддержит. Да. А Я можно это Поэтому со социализм, союз, союз так, как мы его сейчас хотим понять, осмысленно, чтобы самочувствие каждого человека было хорошим. Конечно, он был против независимости балтийских стран. Вот. И он, он старался мне все-таки сказать, что это большая ошибка все-таки, что мы делаем, и что будет очень-очень трудно. И он так сказал, мне это запомнился. Сколько мы знали, так более-менее друг друга. Он сказал, Анатолий, думайте, думайте, думайте. Там выдвигают, как вы обратили внимание, и литовцы, и к ним присоединились и представители Эстонии и Латвии присоединяются, вести переговоры с ними. Думаю, ни о каких переговорах не может быть речь. Переговоры мы ведем с иностранными государствами. Эстонские депутаты привезли идею о экономически независимой Советской Республике к Кремлю. Это привело к серьезным политическим консультациям для Балтийских стран, Россия, и позже также для Советской Республики. Предлагая включить в повестку дня съезда и принять на нем закон СССР о переходе эстонской СССР на республиканский хозяйственный расчет, хозяйственную самостоятельность. And service industries. These experiments convinced the Estonians that the development of a market economy was simply not possible within the communist system. Complete economic independence was the only way forward. After long, hard-fought debates, the Kremlin finally passed a law granting economic independence to the Baltic states on the 27th of November 1989. This led to the re-establishment of the Bank of Estonia on the 1st of January 1990. Rein Otsasson, Deputy Prime Minister and a member of the Congress, was appointed Governor. The Bank started detailed preparations for replacing the Soviet ruble with the national Estonian currency, the Kron. Estonia became the first Soviet Republic to start printing its own currency in the USA and Great Britain. The Kremlin was against these moves. Estonian deputies who wanted to preserve union with Moscow believed that by printing its own currency, Estonia was attempting to split the Soviet Union. But one of the chief objectives the Estonian deputies went to the Kremlin to pursue had not yet been achieved. The Kremlin had been denying the existence of the secret protocols in the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact for 50 years. And they had also refused to acknowledge that their occupation of the Baltic states was illegal. A tense and nerve-wracking battle to lay bare the greatest diplomatic secret of the communist empire was fought out in a Congress committee throughout the rest of that year. The Kremlin might have succeeded in hiding the truth, but for the dogged determination of committee member Endel Lipmar. His detailed and incisive speeches, his encyclopedic knowledge of historical events, and the thorough research he carried out in the United States at last pierced the armor of Soviet lies. Copy from the National Archives in Washington. See avaldas head muljet sellepärast, et teise suurriigi dokumente võetakse tõsiselt. Ja see oli täiendav tõendus, et asi on tõsiselt võetav. 
sest need olid ilusti sõja üle elanud filmide tekstid, kõige oma plätakatega siin. The Kremlin continued to insist that the secret protocols did not exist. The Soviet Foreign Ministry and Pravda, the government-controlled daily newspaper, repeated the party line that the secret documents did not exist. Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union had never agreed to split Poland and carve up Eastern Europe between them. The Estonians continued their campaign to reveal the truth. At first, Gorbachev would not support the proposal of the Estonian deputies to form a committee to investigate the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact. Then, suddenly, he came under direct attack. Estonian deputy Endel Lipmar presented Gorbachev with a copy of the text of the secret protocols at the presidium table of the Kremlin Palace of Congresses. He told Gorbachev that if he did not allow the committee to be set up, the deputies would find out who had decided to send special forces against protesters in the Georgian parliament on the 4th of April 1989. Gorbachev caved in and permitted the formation of the committee, although he was still very much against it. The demands of the Baltic deputies were strongly supported by the people of the Baltic states. Millions gathered to form the world's longest human chain from Tallinn in Estonia to Vilnius in Lithuania on the 23rd of August 1989, the 50th anniversary of the signing of the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact. Nevertheless, only a few people believed that the Kremlin would ever acknowledge Molotov's signature on the documents. The Baltic deputies only had a fraction of the votes in the Congress of People's Deputies that had 2,250 delegates. They needed strong allies and fast. Who would rally to the support of the Baltic states? The Baltic deputies and Democrats in Russia and Ukraine started to form an alliance and in June 1989 the first inter-regional group of deputies was set up at the Congress it quickly turned into a political opposition fighting against the central authority of the communist regime. Ülem nõu, kus tahtsime, tahtsime minema marsida ja siis oli ju niimoodi, et tulid vennad jõuga vastu, siis läks ju rüselemiseks. Aga no täna vist läheb lõõmaks. The only leader of the interregional group of deputies to come from a Baltic country was Victor Palm, one of the founders of the National Front in Estonia. Oli vaja valida esimees. Ja muidugi pakuti kohe välja Jeltsin. Ja siis ma kiiresti panin oma kampuutri käima ja mu delirisin, et sellega tahetakse luua Jeltsini partei. Jeltsini parteid meil vaja ei ole. See on hädaohtlik asi, mitte ainult meil siin, vaid üldse. Victor Palm proposed that five deputies should be elected to head up this group of almost 400 delegates. The five were Boris Yeltsin, future president of the Russian Federation, academician Andrei Sakharov, the historian Yuri Afanasyev, mayor of Moscow Gavriil Popov, and Victor Palm himself, professor at Tartu University, Estonia. Together with these powerful allies, the Baltic deputies could count on at least 700 to 800 votes at the Congress. The decisive battle to reveal the truth about the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact took place in the Palace of Congresses on December the 23rd and 24th, 1989. <laughs> с отдельными поправками, о которых я доложу ниже. А теперь о проблеме, которая вызвала вчера наибольшее количество вопросов о секретных протоколах. Действительно, оригиналы протоколов не найдены ни в советских, ни в зарубежных архивах. Тем не менее, комиссия считает возможным признать, что секретный дополнительный протокол от 23 августа 1939 года существовал.
The committee had sat for six months. The decision was put to the vote after the committee chairman, Alexander Yakovlev, showed a document from the Soviet Foreign Ministry confirming that the secret protocols with Molotov's and Ribbentrop's signatures were indeed in the Kremlin archives. Despite these strong protests, the Congress voted in favor of declaring the Molotov-Ribbentrop secret protocols legally invalid. The vote was carried at the second attempt. See oli palti riikki peale ajalooline etk ja no, rahvusvaheliselt ajalooline etk, sest niimoodi sam sammult see Nõukogude Liidu lagunemise protsess süvenes kogu aeg. Tulk... И то не вся комиссия понимала полное значение вот принятого решения. Мне-то это было понятно, что за этим, конечно, неизбежно последует независимость от прибалтийских государств. И это логично, поскольку осуждено, осуждены эти соглашения и признаны нелегитимными. Все, логика сама подсказывает, что раз это нелегитимно, то, извините, надо решать проблему по-другому. Вот. Значит, но на съезде, поскольку еще имперские камни и валуны еще сидели, до этой мысли не доходили, что это приведет к этому. Не приведи, Господи, если бы кто-нибудь выступил и сказал, я вам вот что, это ведь ведет юридически к тому-то, к тому-то, к тому-то, не прошло бы. Постановление не прошло бы. При, об этом приходилось, я говорил и своим друзьям и по, по комиссии, и из региональной группы, вот, ребят, только надо избежать вот вот такого поворота, какого-нибудь четкого юридического анализа, что за этим последует. Вот. И это удалось. И это удалось. Это уж потом крик начался, но с запозданием. When the secret protocols were declared null and void on the 24th of December 1989 by the highest authority in the Soviet Union, the Baltic states could at last demand national independence on the principle of legal continuity. Lithuania started the process on the 11th of March 1990. Opening the battle with the spirit of gene. <laughs> right from thousand of one night <laughs> and this gene was a spirit of liberty and, and we catch the moment of course it was a moment for this free spirit still preserved in our nations and expressed by the new representatives freely elected having a real democratic mandate of our peoples to go and act and regain independence in absolutely non-violent way. After Lithuania declared independence, the Soviet Union established an economic blockade against the Baltic states. Its main purpose was to weaken Lithuania, but the pressure was also felt in Latvia and Estonia. The Kremlin also threatened to use military force in the Baltic states, as it had done several times in the past.
The economic blockade and the threats against the Baltic states were criticized by Yeltsin, Sakharov and other members of the regional group of deputies. Russian Democrats said that the Kremlin's policies were a case of the Baltics today, Russia tomorrow. Я все вижу и вижу, как и в Союзе, и в Эстонии кое-кто хочет воспользоваться, чтобы свои амбиции реализовать. Далекие от того, о чем мы сегодня говорим. Вот этому нельзя дать развернуться. И это я вас прошу иметь. Все остальное, я вас уверяю, мы решим. The idea of sovereign Soviet republics and of economic independence for those republics came to Boris Yeltsin and other Russian leaders through the actions of the Baltic deputies in the Kremlin and also through Viktor Palm. In spring 1990, the Russian Federation followed the Baltic lead. On the 12th of June 1990, the Congress of Deputies of the Russian Federation adopted a declaration on the national sovereignty of Russia. Estonia had already done the same in November 1988. Lithuania and Latvia declared sovereignty later. It was one thing for the small Baltic states to strive for independence. When giant Russia tried to split from the communist empire, it was a completely different matter. What would be left of the Soviet Union without the Baltic states and Russia? A period of dual authority began in Moscow. On the one hand was Mikhail Gorbachev attempting to reform the Soviet Union from within, on the other, Boris Yeltsin was fighting for sovereignty and economic independence for the new Russian Federation. Self-determination for the Baltic states and Russia put the very existence of the Soviet Union in doubt. Перестройка это такой проект, который разворачивает, не развернувшись, разворачивает и страну, и Европу, и весь мир в другом направлении. Потому что эти вызовы, с которыми мы столкнулись и ответили на них, они требовали такого разворота. Нам нужно было здесь уйти из тоталитарного э, общества, из несвободы к свободе, э, демократии, плюрализму всякому, политическому, идеологическому, и экономическому и так далее. What was the reaction of the supporters of the communist empire to the aspirations towards separation of the Baltic states and Russia? They demanded a tougher economic blockade against the Baltic states, strikes and retaliation operations. They provoked unrest. Да простите, дорогие товарищи, вам что? Нужен каждый раз карабахский вариант, чтобы вы думать начинали о чем-то? Почему вы думаете только после того, как? После того, как начинается литься кровь? Я только прошу обвинению мой адрес не выдвигать. И успокойтесь, успокойтесь. The first attempt to seize power in Estonia happened in May 1990. The supporters of the Communist Empire attacked the parliament and government building in Tallinn. Tegelikult Moskva tahtis näidata, et me ei saa ise hakkama. Et meil ei ole isegi nii palju ise seisvust, et me suudaksime seda sama maja oma käes hoida, kuigi rahvas oli meid siia. Valinud ja me nimetasime ennast Eesti Vabariigi parlament ja Eesti Vabariigi valitsus. To repel the hardliners, the leaders of the three Baltic republics formed the Baltic Council on the initiative of Estonia's Arnold Rutel. The aim of the council was to protect democracy and prevent retaliation in Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. The first attempt to attack Russian Democrats and keep the Soviet Union together by force happened in the autumn of 1990. On the 11th of September, Boris Yeltsin told the session of the Russian Supreme Council, special forces units have arrived in Moscow. Soviet Foreign Minister Eduard Shevardnadze made a threatening speech in December 1990. We were ushli Наступает диктатура, заявляют со всей ответственности. Никто не знает, какая это будет диктатура и кто придет. Что за диктатор 
и какие будут порядки. The second attempt to destroy the Democrats in the Baltic states and Russia was in January 1991. Thirteen people were killed at the Vilnius TV tower on the night of the 13th of January. The operation to restore communist supremacy was supposed to move on to Estonia, but it was foiled by the sudden arrival of Boris Yeltsin in Tallinn. The chairman of the Russian Supreme Council came to Estonia at the invitation of his Estonian colleague, Arnold Rutel. На днях президиум Верховного Совета Российской Федерации принял специальное заявление о событиях в республиках Прибалтики, где осудил действия те, которые противоправны и не соответствуют принятым законам как Российской Федерации, так и законам, принятым Верховными Советами Республик Прибалтики. У меня вопрос к президенту Российской Федерации. Кто, по-вашему, в настоящее время управляет Советским Союзом? Первое, поправляю, что я не президент, а председатель Верховного Совета Российской Федерации. Кто управляет в Советском Союзе? Мы хотим, чтобы после объявления и принятия, вернее, постановления о государственном суверенитете в Советском Союзе в основном управляли в республиках и республики сами. Baltic deputies of the People's Congress in Estonia, supported by Democrats from Russia, prevented the tragic events in Vilnius from being repeated in Tallinn. A week later, on January the 20th, there was fighting in the streets of Riga and at the Ministry of the Interior, but the attempt to restore the old order in the Baltic states had already failed. The determination of the Baltic states to achieve independence could not be thwarted by military might. The situation was serious indeed. Rein Otsasson, the governor of the Bank of Estonia, sent a letter to the Swedish Svenska Handelsbanken on the 17th of January 1991. The letter named the individuals authorized to deal with the Bank of Estonia accounts at the Handelsbanken in Stockholm should Soviet forces take control of the Bank of Estonia in Tallinn. The third attempt to destroy democracy was in August 1991. Tanks were sent by the Soviets to Moscow, Leningrad and the Baltic states. Tens of thousands of volunteers gathered to protect the building of the Russian Supreme Council, as well as the parliament buildings, TV towers and radio buildings in Tallinn, Riga and Vilnius. In Estonia, there were preparations for a general strike. We were preparing for the general strike to make a full strike and to make sure that all of the citizens and citizens were in the strike. I was one of the people who wrote a text on the general strike. Me kirjutasime selle teksti valmis ja tolleks ajaks oli korraldatud rahvarinde poolt suur miiting. See oli vabaduse väljakul. Mina ei ole oma silmadega vabaduse väljakul nii palju rahvast näinud kui toogord. Kas me jääme ootama iga üks oma kodus kinnisõukse taga ja loodame et ehk läheb see karikas siiski see kord meist mööda või tõuseme püsti päi ja ütleme selge ei ise hakkanud võimumestele. Aga! 
see oli nii, et tunne nagu enne lahinguse minekud, tead, nagu, nagu enne tohutud häikest. See, see oli nagu magus ja see oli nagu irm ja irm ja et no nüüd, eks ole sellepärast tankid ju tulid. On the same night, August the 20th, 1991, the Supreme Council of the Republic of Estonia adopted a declaration that restored the country's independence. Lugupeetu tulemnõuga kuh, kes on selle poolt, et võtta vastu Eesti vabarid ülemnõugu kotsus Eesti riiklikust iseseisvusest mõheletada 53 häält. Kõik näite gavaril pa muimu Bismarck, što tot komu das uhvatitsa za polu proletajuši istoriji, tot što to može zdelat. Ja domaj, što istorički proces on idiot, jo ne zja prakinut, a vod skorektirovat, skorektirovat, Možno, jestli ulovit. O te to samé hlavné. Selete pane Kupolton, kusky men dvěch starých fasádiků, vastu je rapole tuď sádiků diole, odsus vastu vetu. Kůj je Alexej, no odsus vastu vet matta, no Alexej, on od kůl sátus lík mi kůj je Alex. Má i tahle kůl arvata líka palju, měsíc a měsíc taká má arbanet, teď by byla šíz je Alexka testes, lidu a barík tedes, kroky tuď nejít odsus je vastu vet. I takda. Подав народу руку, русский флаг подвигли на краной. Три танкиста, три весовых друга. Экипаж, машины боевой. Три танкиста, три весовых друга. Экипаж, машины боевой. И тогда на танк поднялся Ельцин. Прозвучал призыв на пасаран. Мы готовы всей душой и сердцем Отстоять свободу россиян. Мы готовы всей душой и сердцем Отстоять свободу россиян. У нас нельзя... Он там уже наш депутат, а вы кого же плюс покажете? В Эстонии. В Эстонии. Эстонское телевидение. Спасибо. А мы рады с Россией. Конечно. Сегодня вечером должен Михаил Горбачев сказать либо, что он подписал указ, либо он подпишет указ. Вот и главное, и главное. Подготовьте указ. Делаем вопрос в том, какие ваши предложения по бумаге есть, конкретные для изменения этого последнего проекта указа. Это латвийский проект. Вот это все. Я думаю, давайте с технической стороны. Да, от идеологии. Пожалуйста, уйдем. Чистые. Да, да. Сейчас уже отменить вот эти... Отменить. Да. Хорошо. Вот Отмена. И вторая. Что дальше будет? Как мы ну, поступим? Ну, вот, вот, вот. Когда, допустим, это хорошие или плохие проекты готовы, что mm. будет дальше? Тендер, надо прорваться к Горбачеву. Совершенно надо. верно. Давайте, Тендер. давайте, как, идите к Горбачеву вот с этими уже проектами. Хорошо. Окей. Они воймалик, табата хетке, кус Горбачевил, и нам ей он отписывал твоему. Ja Jeltsinil veel, veel ei olnud piisavalt võimu, ühel enam ei olnud, teisel veel ei olnud. Ja sel hetkel oli võimalik muidugi oma tahtmise läbi viia. Sest kumbki ei olnud võimeline Nõukogude liitu de facto korralikult juhtima, te juurest rääkimata. Head vaatajad ja nüüd me toome teieni Venema presidendi Boris Jeltsini seadluse Eesti vabariigi riikliku iseseisvuse tunnustamisest täieliku teksti ja see on esiteks. Seoses Eesti vabariigi ülemnõugu kootsusega riikliku iseseisvuse välja kuulutamisest tunnustada Eesti vabariigi riikliku iseseisust. Russian president Boris Jeltsin and Estonian leader Arnold Rutel met at that time. Moscow paid its respects to the young men who died during the coup attempt. Nevertheless, Boris Yeltsin found time to put his name to the document that was a matter of principle for Estonia. Это так справедливый, нужный, своевременный, так что я его подписал указ с удовольствием. Я поздравляю вас. Я думаю, что это поздравляю вас с государственной независимостью. Тем более еще второе, что это подписанный э, в 
такой парпе, в самые решающие моменты этот да. документ. Эстонийские депутаты went to the Kremlin for the last time in early September 1991. This time they wanted the Soviet Union to recognize that Estonia had regained its independence. Estonian deputies joined Russian Democrats in supporting the motion to dissolve the Congress and to hand over power to a new ruling body, the State Council. The Estonian deputies lobbied hard and managed to get the Council to vote on the restoration of independence of Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania as the first mission of its very first session. The State Council supported the restoration of the independence of Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. The occupation, that had lasted for half a century, was over. The Communist Empire was falling apart. The decision on the 6th of September meant that the Soviet Union's borders were redrawn. Assumpt est Maria in Cielo, credo carnis resurrectionem et vitam eterno. Pater noster pies in Cielis, sanctificetur nomen tu, at venia trenium tu. Że Polska 25 lat temu ostatecznie wybiła zęby niedźwiedziowi sowieckiemu. I kiedy nie może już ugryźć, to inne kraje już nie bojąc się, że ugryzie ich rękę i mutnie z rąbkami, mogą robić swoją wolność i swoje rozwiązania. Gdyby to się nie stało, nie byłyby w stanie niczego zrobić w drodze do wolności. The results of the Polish freedom movement were important for the Baltic states. If the Kremlin had succeeded in crushing the 40 million Poles in the early 1980s, Estonia would not have started the Phosphorite War, the National Front, or the singing revolution. It all might have happened in another way in time, but not as quickly. The dismantling of the socialist system in Eastern Europe was a process that began in Poland in the early 1980s and ended with the collapse of the Soviet Union itself in 1991. <laughs> Тогда надо было насильственную революцию делать с кровью, а мы этого не хотели. А вот так перейти от одного строя к другому в один день без, без насилия невозможно. А мы-то встали на строго на эволюционный путь, бескровный, ненасильственный, и нам это удалось. Знаете, сколько выкриков, клеветы и упреков в мой, в мой адрес раздавалось, так сказать. Поэтому я вот товарищам моим коллегам из Прибалтийских республик сказал, что я прошу только одного – пускать меня после признания без визы. То есть, или, по крайней мере, быстро визу выдавать. The parliamentary freedom movement, brought to the Kremlin by the Baltic deputies, proved to be stronger than the Soviet Union Communist Party, its secret police and an army of four million soldiers. Estonian ideas and the cooperation of the Baltic deputies with the Russian Democrats led to what had always seemed impossible, the peaceful destruction of the Communist Empire. If the rulers of the Kremlin had known beforehand, what the Estonians would achieve there, in the political arena, they might never have let them enter.
крушения Советского Союза было крупнейшей геополитической катастрофой века.